What's good y'all? Today I'm going to be teaching you guys to make your own designer handbag with this step-by-step -step tutorial. These are great daily use bags for carrying your essentials and I really love this pattern because it's fairly simple but it's still super clean and functional. I've been having a lot of fun experimenting with a bunch of different styles of handbags so I figured it was finally time to get you guys a pattern and a tutorial for a handbag. The link to the pattern is below. Once you get it, it'll be emailed to you as a PDF that you can print off at home and it'll come with some extra notes as well as some chances to win some free things. Then this video will give you the extra info you need as well as a step-by-step -step tutorial to help you make this bag come to life. I'll be doing some extra things throughout this video to customize this bag, but the focus of this video is gonna be on making this bag in its simplest form. I would say this pattern is in the intermediate range, but at the end of this video, I'll go over some ways that you can make this pattern more beginner friendly. Also, once you've tested this pattern, I encourage you to make changes to it. Maybe you want it bigger or smaller, but just adapt it to make it your perfect size and style. And I'll go over some ways to do that at the end of this video too. So without further ado, let's get into it. All you're gonna need is the base fabric of your choice. I'm using scrap denim, the lining fabric of your choice. I'm using thrifted jeans and then interfacing and heavyweight backing. The pattern, cord for the piping, snap buttons, and then glue, rivets, and tape are optional but recommended. You'll start by printing the pattern at 100% scale on eight and a half by 11 inch paper, and you'll wanna check this little test box to make sure it printed properly. Then you can cut out your pattern pieces being precise as possible, and then you're ready to go. There's some pieces that say cut on fold and you can choose whether you cut those pieces on the fold or what I do is print them twice, mirror one side and then tape them together so that I have the full piece. You can start cutting your pieces now, take your time, precision is key, and make sure to mark the middle of each piece as you cut, you'll need these markings later. Once everything is cut, you should have two front pieces from your base fabric and two from your interfacing, two side pieces from your main fabric and two from the interfacing, one bottom piece from the base fabric and one from the interfacing and one from the lining, the two strap pieces and two handle pieces from the main fabric, the two lining pieces, and then the heavyweight backing pieces, so your bottom piece and two front pieces. I'm gonna get the heavyweight backing on now. The backing is smaller than the respective base pieces because we don't wanna sew through it, so I'm gonna mark a half inch around on all of the sides of the base pieces, then I'll line my backing up perfectly with those markings I just made, and I'll fuse it in place. Since you won't sew through the backing you want to add an extra layer of protection to hold the backing in place so i'll add this interfacing and since the interfacing will be sewn through that'll lock the backing in place because it sandwiches it in there so i'll iron on the interfacing make sure to go around the edges as well to really seal it in lastly you won't add heavyweight backing to the side pieces but i would recommend using a heavier interfacing since my side pieces are already two layers of fabric thick i'm just going to add my featherweight interfacing and now all our backing is on these pieces and we can move on. If you want to add purse feet, I have these markings so you can add six purse feet to the base as well. Now for the piping, I'll cut a strip of fabric that's one and three eighths of an inch wide and 31 inches long and I'll cut a piece of one eighth inch cord that's the same length and then I can make my piping cord. You'll need a presser foot that can get right up next to the cord because that's what will give us our three eighths inch seam allowance and on the same note, if you use a different size cord, you'll need to change the width of the fabric strip too so that the seam allowance allowance stays the same. Then I'll cut little quarter inch slits on the piping cord. This will allow it to curve around the bottom piece. So starting just past the middle on one side, I'll start clipping the piping all the way around. When I get back to where I started, I'll trim the cord so that it matches up with my other cord end, and then I'll trim the fabric a bit and fold it back so there's no raw edge and I'll clip it all in place. I also like to try to match this edge up perfectly with the middle mark. Now on the top of our base pieces and lining pieces, we'll have to fold these tops three eighths of an inch down later on. So I'm gonna mark three quarters of an inch down. It's easier to do this now than later. Then on my front pieces, I'll mark these rectangles out. These will be used shortly to place the handles and straps in place. Now you wanna make your handles following the measurements of the pattern. You'll want the sole line to be one and a quarter inch up from the bottom and the pinch should be at least three quarters of an inch above that. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through the whole process of making the handles, but if you don't know how to make a rolled handle, I have a tutorial that I'll link below. 
Now for the straps, I'll start by marking half an inch from the edge on both sides. Then I'll get some glue within that area and fold the edge to the line and press it down well. Now I can mark the middle the long way. And again, I'll glue that area and fold one side into the line then fold the other side in so that they meet in the middle. Then again, I'll glue it and fold it in half one last time. Now that all the prep work is done, we're ready to get into the sewing. But before we do that, I have a few notes for you. First, I'm gonna be sewing all of the seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance unless otherwise noted. Second, I'm gonna be using a three millimeter stitch length for all of the seams and a four millimeter stitch length for all of the top stitching. And finally, since I have an industrial machine, I'll be using a heavier weight thread. I'll be using a Tex 90 cotton wrap poly core thread and a Tex 80 bonded nylon thread. If you have a domestic machine and can't use these heavier weight threads, it's fine. Just use what threads you can and it'll still come out beautifully. I'll start by basting the piping on. I'll sew all the way around, making sure the edge of the piping stays in line with the edge of the base piece. Now back to the strap pieces. I'll mark one and a quarter inch from the edge and I'll start on that line and sew all the way around until I get back to that line on the other side. Then this lower area is where I'll actually sew it onto the bag. So I'll sew the straps now, starting at one line, going all the way around to the other line, and I'm sewing an eighth of an inch from the edge. Then I'll mark the middle of the strap and mark five eighths of an inch from the edge, and I'll punch the hole for the snap button. But I'll wait until the end to add the button so I don't have to worry about it getting scratched or anything while I finish the bag. I'm gonna get the handles on now, so I'll add some glue on the bottom of the handles and in the rectangle areas I marked out. Then I'll stick the handles in place, lining them up with those bottom corners of the rectangles I marked out. Now I can sew those on, starting where my stitching stopped before and going around the other side. So I'll sew that on an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around. Go slow, you definitely want this part to be as clean as you possibly can get it. Then I'll do the exact same for my straps, sticking those in place and sewing them on just like I did for the handle. I also typically sew across this line on the strap and the handles, and I highly recommend adding a single or double rivet in this area here. Both these things will make the bag more durable. Now on the front, I'll mark this dot out and I'll get the male side of a snap button punched in place there. This will be for the strap. I can start combining my pieces now. So I'll combine my side pieces with my front pieces right sides together and I'll sew those with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Then I can top stitch all the way down an eighth of an inch from the edge on both those seams. I'm doing just these two seams to start because I think it's easier to manage this way. But once those two are done, I'll add the last panel on and repeat that process for one more side, sewing that seam and then top stitching that. Then finally, I'll do the last seam. The top stitching for this seam will be a little bit trickier, but just go slow and you'll be just fine. Now that our pieces are all combined and top stitched, we're ready to get the base on, but first I'm gonna cut quarter inch slits in that area that will go around the curves on the bottom. This will allow it to spread nicely in those areas. Now I can start matching all four middle marks, then go back and clip the areas in between, making sure that everything lines up perfectly all the way around. I can sew the base on now. Remember, you need a presser foot that can get right up next to the piping cord. You won't be able to see the piping cord since it's sandwiched in there, but you'll be able to feel it. And if you keep that foot pressed up right against the cord, you'll have your 3 8 inch seam allowance. This part is honestly never fun, but just take your time and make sure things stay as lined up as you sew. Just get it done. Now that the base is sewn on, I'll get some tape on my top section and I'll fold the top edge down to that three quarter inch line I drew all the way around during the prep. Now for the lining, I'll start by marking the three snap buttons on each side of the lining. I also recommend adding some backing in where you put the snaps to give it some extra strength. Regardless, go ahead and add those buttons. Now I can start combining these pieces, so I'll clip them right side Sides together and I'll sew both sides at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Then I can press those seams open flat and then I'll top stitch both sides a quarter inch from the edge. Now I can take the base piece and match the seams to the middle mark on the outside and match the middle marks on the other sides. Again, I'll clip the areas that will go around the curve of the bottom so that it can spread nicely. Then I'll sew the bottom on. Take your time and work around the curves. Make sure nothing gets pinched. Then just like before, I'll get some tape in that top area and fold that line down to the 3 quarter inch mark I made before. Now the lining is done. There's the buttons on both sides and the seams are pressed open and top stitched down. There should be three male buttons on one side and three female buttons on the other side so that they snap together when the bag is closed. Now we can combine the lining and the base. So I'll get some tape 
tape on the top of the base. And then this part isn't required, but if you wanna lock the lining in place so it can't pull up, you can combine the base of the lining and the outer shell wrong sides together and you sew them together. Regardless, now you'll pull the lining up and tape the lining and outer shell wrong sides together. If you have a flatbed machine like I do, you'll have to sew it this way. If you have a domestic machine or especially a post bed machine, you can flip the bag first, then sew the lining. It's easier that way. You just can't do it like that on a flatbed because you can't get in there like you need to. But regardless, I'm gonna top stitch all the way around an eighth of an inch down from the top. This will combine the lining and the outer shell. Go slow, just make sure this part is super clean. Once you've sewn the top, you can flip the bag. If you used a heavyweight backing like I did, this part is a bit tedious, but just take your time and get everything pushed through. There'll be a lot of pressure as you flip it, but as long as you stitched everything properly, nothing's gonna bust open. Once it's turned, it'll still look a little bit misshaped, so you'll have to work around the seams, make sure everything looks nice and is sitting how it should. You'll go ahead and add the buttons to the strap and then you're done. The bag came out super clean. I'm very happy with it. I think that it's a great size bag and you can always add more pockets like I did too. And just overall, I think it's a super beautiful bag, very well structured and it's fairly sleek, but you can also open it up as well. And it has a lot more space inside still. And again, like I said, you can always add more pockets on the inside too if you want extra place to store things. Before you go, I'm gonna teach you a couple quick things that may help you with making this bag. And I'm gonna show you the bag on body so you have a size reference. Like I mentioned before, I would say that this bag is in the intermediate range, but I'm gonna run you through a few things that may make this bag a bit more beginner friendly for you. First off, I used heavyweight backing, which makes the bag stiffer, which in turn makes it a bit trickier to sew, turn, things like that. So if you're not comfortable using heavyweight backing, you can always just skip that, or you could at least just use a little bit heavier and or extra interfacing instead. I use piping on the base of my bag to help add structure. The piping can make things a bit trickier though. So if you're not comfortable doing piping, you can always skip that, or you could get store-bought piping too. But just remember, if you're gonna do piping, you do need a presser foot that can sew right up next to that piping cord so that you can get your correct 3 8 inch seam allowance and so that the piping is nice and tight. If you wanna adjust the height of the bag, all you have to do is add or subtract from the bottom of these pieces. If you wanna adjust the width, you have to add or subtract from this cut on fold side and do the same to the bottom piece. So if you wanna add one inch, you'd add a half inch here so when it's doubled, you get your full inch. If you wanna adjust the depth of the bag, you'll just adjust the width of this piece then similar to before you'd have to split this piece in half this way and add or subtract half the total amount you adjusted this piece by for all of these adjustments you have to adjust the lining piece and potentially the handle and button placements and you'll have to resize the backing pieces so that those match up too i also have an option for a bigger handbag pattern too that's essentially the exact same as this just already pre-adjusted for you so if you're interested in that check that out as well for reference, I'm six foot four, and this is how the bag looks on body for me. I think this bag is a really great size and it's a great pattern all the way around. It has some nice details and it's still super functional. I hope this tutorial was easy to follow. I'm still fairly new at this, so feel free to drop your recommendations in the comments. It'd be much appreciated so that I can help give you guys better tutorials. If you wanna see some of my other work, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok. And if you want more tutorials, make sure to subscribe here. I'll be posting as frequently as I can, at least once a month. And I'll also be doing giveaways to people who purchase my patterns and even just people who comment and subscribe here as well. So have fun making your handbags. This pattern has so much potential for customization. So have fun with it. I can't wait to see what you guys make. I love y'all.